Hi everyone, Joel here, and I am bringing this beginning bit as a bit of an apology for how late it is. Um, I did record it at the end of February. It is taking me this time, along with other things in life going on, to edit and process this video. So I do apologise. You've probably sat there going, oh, when's he going to do it? It is almost finished. I've had to make a few corrections along the way. Uh, which is taking more time so it's here hopefully i have now a plan of how i'm going to do my videos in the future to make them a bit more mm, productible um, and quicker in production um, so hopefully it won't be as late as this so please sit back and enjoy yes it's a bit old but it's actually some of it's quite relevant still so thank you for watching and if you're listening to this as a podcast then as you can guess, it's on YouTube. There's videos linked to it, which actually might serve better than listening on podcast. But do enjoy it as a podcast. Uh, I do enjoy, do appreciate you listening. Thank you. Enjoy the video. Hello, my name is Joel Wright and these are my vlogs, my monthly vlogs. I, I'm hoping to do more regularly. If you haven't been to these already, it's all about board gaming uh, in general. Uh, that is one of my big main hobbies at the minute and I enjoy it very much. So I take a look at my last month of what I've been up to in board gaming, whether it's been playing, buying or anything else that's going on really that takes my interest. So this month, February, brings a lot of excitement to the whole nation where Boris announced that we'll be coming out of this lockdown period hopefully by the 8th of March which is a couple of days after my birthday so I've got that to look forward to. I also got to look forward to mi reaching middle age a good old 40 zero, 4 zero, and yeah well let's see if life gets better from there but anyway I did say in my last the last month in January, that I was on a hiatus of buying and backing games. That lasted all of a matter of a few days when I backed my first Kickstarter of the year. And it was a surprising backing, and a backing I kind of questioned every day whether I should be doing it. It's called Reloaded, and it's from Colossal Games. Now, Reloaded is basically taking on this new, well, this like genre of video game battle royale mode. It's one to four, uh, one to four, two to four players, um, and you've got this kind of map. It, re it reminds me pretty much of Fortnite, the video game, where you can actually you move around this map. The map gets closer as the storm moves in, but you can also put walls up um, in it. What it does have is this really exciting um, new element of a kind of a track mode of how you power up and uh, things like that. Um, I question whether I should be put back in it every moment because I, 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 I backed it because our oh, eyes would love this. He absolutely loves Fortnite. I like Warzone. Um, I do play a bit of Fortnite myself, but he absolutely loves Fortnite. And I thought, well, this might be great to play and get it on the table. It's one of those things. Actually, quite a reasonable price for the core box, but of course, you had a lot of extras added onto it if you wanted to go down that route and possibly it might lead to it they've also got this season one um content within the package that you can add on which means possibly next year will bring season two and then maybe if it is doing that well and it does pick up then season three so it could be an un endless money pit of um yeah but it, it does have some nice of course miniatures as your player counters and um some nice artwork uh things like that so i kind of am looking forward to this when this does arrive next year um i think it's actually early uh, late this year but i'm kind of going to put it on to that it's going to be next year by the time it gets here my headphones plugged in right <clears throat> not only that did i back a, a kickstarter i also brought two games on the expansion and it's all because Meeple's Corner every weekend does an auction of where he's actually getting rid of um, some games at a price people bid at. It's a standard highest bidder wins at the end of a time by Monday. 
So the auction starts on Friday lunchtime and goes on till evening on Monday the next week. And basically, um, it's done on Facebook. He puts a picture up and a description of the game he's saying. And he does about four groups. And then uh, you have to click on a picture of the game or group of games you want to bid on and the price uh, up the price of the last bid. It's really simple, quite ingenious. One way of getting traffic to his Facebook group, but also um, getting rid of maybe some games that are hanging around a bit too long in his stock. Um, but sometimes you can find gems and sometimes you can get them for get games for a very good price. In the past, I picked up um, Brash Lancashire for about £25, the brand new one as well, which was like a steal at it. Um, this, a uh, couple of weeks ago, I picked up Otis, uh, for £10. Great. I, I haven't played it yet, but lo and behold, did I know I'll be perched, try bidding again a couple of weeks later and picking up Lost Runes of Arna, Arnaka, Arnetka, or something like that. And, uh, the expansion for Great Western World, well, Great Western Trails, Road to... No, uh, rails to north, rails, uh, rails to the north, or something like that. Oh, rails to the north. Um, so I picked that up. Yes, kind of broke my duck already, but I've already, just before the month ended, got a couple of games in of um, Lost ru- Runes of Anaka. Anaka. Oh, I can't think what it is now, but and it's really good. I really like it. It's quite good fun. Um. So, and it brings along two of my favourite mechanism, deck building, worker placement. So, um, that was a big bonus on it. Um, I haven't uh, played the others, but that was it. I did get given a game as a gift from my friend Lewis. And I've also got, you can see it in the background, been sent a prototype from Sit Down Games um, called Dive, which I'll be having a look at. Um, later on this month, uh, see what it's like. So, so there. Yeah, um, that is basically really what I've all brought. And now on to the next bit. What have I been playing? So, like I said, have played Ross Lost Runes of Arnica, um, just as it came in good fun i really enjoyed it the wife actually enjoyed it as well took a while for her head to get round stuff there's a lot going on it does a combo effect after a while but um it it is good fun and my only concern is is because it's got this combo effect games might take a long time when we're playing with four players um there's no real scaling down either so um yeah this could be another monumental like lewis said when i was explaining it to him um, but what's nice is they already have the implement of turn base rounds. So you don't do the whole of your turn in one go. You have one main action. Someone has a main action. Next person has a main action. Comes back to you have a main action, um, which is what I like and actually helps spread it out a bit more. So um, great game. Really good components. I did do an unboxing. It will be up hopefully at the end of this month. I am just behind on everything. But, um, yeah, it's really great. Uh, I've been continuing my city. I've actually, it's actually slowed down a little bit. Um, we were trying to get three games done. It's now down to about two games um, at the most. And I, I am really, really enjoying it. I really like the development of it. And I will give my final thoughts afterwards. Even the wife enjoys it, even though she does swear a lot at it because... It's one of those kind of games. Um, the kids are kind of just like there. And we if we do have to kind of bribe and f- persuade them to play it. Um, and sometimes it ends in tears and sometimes they actually get into it and actually play it. It's not the game, it's them, really. They, they're kind of gone a bit anti-ball gaming at the minute. Um, Finish my our game of pandemic le, pandemic legacy season zero. We did restart the last mission and we did okay this time. Um, 
we got an uh, 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 we got an outcome that was probably better than our first attempt at the last scenario. Um, so yeah, we finished that. Now got it in a box and trying to find a big enough uh, shallow box frame to fit the board in. Now I've completed it. Played a game of Rococo Deluxe, um, and I played it with all the expand. Well, most of the expansions I didn't put. Like, there's lots of little tiny expansions of different types of dresses, but played it with the jewelry box, and we played it with a couple of extra um, dress scenarios. Um, and it's really good. Like, things are a little bit more clearer in this version. The jewelry box adds. A nice little element touch to it but because we played it two player we kind of feel like it's not a suited game for two player and because there's not it's not enough kind of like getting in each other's way and um, there's always kind of room for something which is a shame and it has come with a scenario version which is basically an AI, AI character that you turn over cards and you do what it says on the cards and um, it's got a quite a good sequence of how that works. And I actually said to Claire, how about we try this another time with this as a third player to add that extra element of interaction and um, jeopardy kind of thing to it. And she said, OK, if you think it will work. We haven't got rounds of playing that version, so hopefully this month we will. And we'll see how that goes, because I think that could really up the anti as a two player game having the solo expansion which is madame debut or something like that so uh so yeah we're gonna i hope groco is a favorite between us um it'd probably be even more favorite if it uh, we had more people to play with or um works better as a two player and hopefully this expansion this solo version will help fix that still playing kings of dilemma we had another session of it this time um i was hoping to get most of it finished and um yeah we got a bit sidetracked because we started then talking about buying houses which at the minute me and claire are in the process of looking at moving house and we're not planning on going far um but kind of wanting to um need a bigger house um because we're slightly outgrowing it uh rapidly um since we got two grown up kids and hmm, my hobby is slightly taken over a bit. But yeah, so we got a bit sidetracked and like the first game took like hours to do. And um, we played a few more games um, and now we're kind of, I think we're going to have another session in a couple of weeks time. Um, and what I'm hoping, I'm kind of hoping this will be the last session. Um, I will give again my final thoughts on the game at, at once we complete. Um, but it's another good game for this lockdown situation we've been in. That's what I can say for it. Okay. And that's mainly it. I mean, played a lot of um on a lot of games on Board Game Arena. Um and uh yeah, Warzone really. Um slightly as I was a bit addicted to that. Kind of that's getting in the way of this, plus work, um, things like that. But um I, when I'm not doing other things like that, then I'm trying to get all this done. Anyway, so yeah, that's basically been my uh, plays of the month, really. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it actually is not bad, really, for kind of situations we're in. Um, I don't think we have played anymore. I'm trying to think. Oh, yes, we have played another one. Horrified. So, um... Yeah, we had an evening, and uh, Missy said, oh, let's, let's play a game. And she didn't want to play Roco Carry, um, just because we only just played it, the, like, a couple of nights ago. She wanted something maybe a little bit different. And Tay said, I said, well, what about Horrified? It's sat in my unplayed pile. Um, I hear it's really good. There's a video tutorial you can watch to learn how to play it. So we sat there, cracked it open. I hadn't even taken it out of the shrink. I've had this game since last year, when the first lockdown happened from Meeple's Corner, and uh, I hadn't even taken, I've taken the shrink off, but I haven't actually taken the rest of the stuff out of the shrink, so it was actually kind of a nice, <laughs> for once, Claire actually got to um, punch and set up a game um, together, which doesn't really happen, um, 
So we actually played it, and it was really good fun. We played the first scenario, the suggested first game, uh, beat that easily. We played the second, uh, another scenario, mixed up a bit, and um, it, it was a completely different game, and we had fun. We nearly, nearly won it. We were probably a couple of moves away, um, either that um, or the deck. There's a monster deck. If that runs out, um, that ends the game. Um, if the monsters do certain, if the monsters do some kind of, uh, there's a chart. So it's it's a bit pandemic-y. I mean, more or less every kind of co-op game is kind of pandemic-y. So you've got a track at the top, like an outbreak track. If that gets too far, then uh, the game will lose. If a deck runs out, the game will lose. Um, so... Um, the only way you can beat it is defeating each of the uh, monsters on the board. And you can have two, three, or even four, if you're thinking of being crazy. Um, and each monster has their own unique playing rules. Okay, um, They have their own unique playing rules. They also have their own unique... Uh, way of being defeated as well and it may there's six monsters in there and each one is so so good um each one's a can be a pain in the ass but that's the that's the name of the game and then i was looking on board game geek and there's tons people are making other characters up so there's lots of um downloadable and printable other monsters on there uh like the blob um i really can't think that there's some good sound of the um phantom of the opera things like that so there's lots of different things on there the only shame is you have to try and find a, a piece to represent that new monster from out of an own collection or something like that so yeah we played horrified and really really enjoyed it um we're going to play some more of it hopefully um but yeah so there's two games i um played off of my um pile of shame and added two more back to it but i played one so it's down one up one if i include that one so it's up two if i include that but hey hey ho we'll see how see how well i do this month um there is plans i know i'm not going to be able to not buy anything this month so the next chapter is actually going to be what's on my shelf, which was recorded earlier in the month. And I'm going to put it in here. And you can see part of my collection of what is in my collection. I explain why it's in there. So, yeah, check it out. If you like this kind of section, let me know in the comments below because um, I'll hopefully keep doing it. Uh, OK, now we're going to start with uh, doing the bottom row, that is, of my a collection of my Catacatch shelving. I've got a 4x4, four four, well, actually 5x4 four four, uh, shelf unit, uh, but the bottom row is actually cupboards. If you look in here, I've actually got more games in here. Some weird, wonderful games, actually, I've even forgotten I've got. Zombie Dice, Forbidden Island, Forbidden Desert, Dinky is the uh, kids' games, uh, Bucket of Doom. Weird things, human search for that's a great game, I like that. Very easy content. Then I've got another one. This is kind of odds and ends draw. There's a lot of um, game pieces in here that I'm use, planning to use when I actually get around to making my game. Friday, great solo game that I like to take on holiday with me. Now, this is my components section. I've got loads of cubes. I brought all these back in uh, Essen when I went there, but I've got loads of spare bits and pieces that. I've collected from games that are either too broken to get rid of or um, like got spare replacements. And this one is my little card game collection, the ones that I like, plus like some sleeves um, and things like that. This is like one of my first original Kickstarters, not the very first one, but one of my first backings, which I love. Poo. Oh, I love Pooh. Pooh is my one of my first card games I ever got um, when I got into the hobby because I heard it was a great game for family and things like that. Um, so yeah, that's one that's never going to leave. Um, yeah, I've got a Flux, Pirate Flux, quite like Pirate Flux. Uh, haven't played it for ages. Uh, spare promos, 
Rory Story Cubes. Fungi is a great two-player game. So that's what's in the bottom of that bit, which ain't that interesting. And I kind of forget about half the time it's there. So here's section one, which actually behind here, a couple of games. We've got Big Monster and Roadhog. Roadhog was a uh, review game. I've already played it once. I actually kind of quite liked it, um, which is a shame. And they're being put at the back because we kind of run out of room. So um, once we move, hopefully I can get a bigger, better storage system. So you can see I've got all my epic games. Now, I actually started with zombie epic, tiny epic zombies. And then I brought ever since. Um, maybe I got into it. And I have got pirates coming, so that I've added to the collection. I am not doing their latest Kickstarter because uh, it's not selling it to me, really. Um, it's another dungeon crawl, and I don't think I want another dungeon crawl. Dungeon Drop, great, innovative game. I really like the kind of drop in the cubes aspects. Really quick, really short, really easy to play. Metro X, good roll and write or flip and write. Um, another welcome to, I love this game. Can't get enough of it. So this is kind of, well, these three are my um, kind of uh, roll and write kind of section. Um, and then just one great party game that um, I would do want to bring to my students when we have time. But because of the pandemic, it's never been the right time. Section two, um, small, small, sorry, small world. So I've got both underground and the main one, and this is heavy because, because I have practically everything in here. And I've got a wooden container to hold it all in, which is really nice. So I've got most boards in here, I've got the new expansions. And um, the only thing that's not in here is the events card, which I do have. Um, but I've never used them really, so... Um, it's pointless keeping in there and if I wanted to get the rest of the expansions in it had to come out to make it all fit and it just about fits put it all in so again Small World was one of my first games I added to my collection way back and it was on offer uh, one of the shops the first UK Games Expo I went to one of the shops there Dink, Dink and Den section and that was in there for a really good price. I picked that up. Um, I do like Underworld, um, but it's a bit small and there's a little bit uh, complex to it. But I do like it. On the Underground, now this was actually a review copy because um, I supported them, championed them. As soon as I played it at UK Games Expo, their retail version, uh, pr uh, prototype version, which is really good, really good. I had absolutely loved it and fell in love with it and championed it all the way. And I still love it now. I won't play it with five players. Possibly might play it with four, but definitely not going to play it with five people. It just takes too long and it just feels like there's not much angle, wriggle room for you. So three players is like the sweet spot. I do like that. Stop Thief, uh, good game where you actually can play either cooperative or competitively things like that depends on your fancy uh, and it works really well with the app and then ticket to ride london um actually quite like this version of the small ticket to rides um but i do still prefer to play the big one now this section is like what i call like my kids section in a way it's a little bit young but all the games i do like um, so for spaghetti, it's basically pick up sticks with shoestrings. Um, it is good fun with the kids and family, but possibly that could be one that could be seeing its way out. Coconuts, I backed the Kickstarter when it first came out, and I mean, it, the box is pretty beaten up. Everything's pretty beaten up, but I love this game. If I got like kids over that don't play board games, that would be the first one I'd bring out with them and say, look, you should play this. This is amazing. Um, and everyone has a laugh. We don't play with the card powers. We just play to flick coconuts at each other. Good fun. Uh, Vala, Villa Pilati. Uh, Villa Pilati. Uh, it's a good little game 
we actually don't play to the rules with this. Another one. Um, we actually, me and my, I bought it for my boy. Cause I heard about it, and we actually make just do it to try and build up as high as we can, and he loves it. Trying to drag the columns out and stick them on, and then potion explosion. And this is the second edition one. So uh, that's got the plastic tray in it. I've actually got the first expansion. I'm waiting for the uh, sixth student expansion to come out. So um, we can play with lots of people. But I don't know where it is in the UK. It's not been around for a bit. We've got like another small game section. I don't think there's anything behind here. No, there's nothing behind here. So, so Fistful of Meeples, great concept. Kind of um, pick up the uh, little meeples in one area and then drop them off around the town. Uh, there could be a shootout. It's quick. It's fun. It's simple. Kind of, I do like it. I'm wondering whether an expansion would make it that little bit better, add a little bit more to it. Um, so I'm waiting on that to see if that will drop. Jetpack Joyride. I think it's great fun. Um, it hasn't been out recently. Um, and possibly that could be another one to go onto the cell pile soon. Um, the only trouble is, I did get the collector's edition, which came with the little figurine. I quite like the figurine, so I don't know if I can get away with selling it without, but um, we'll see. Little Town, one of my favourite worker placement games. Really short, simple family friendly um, worker placement game um i did a review on it so you can go and check that out uh, and see what my full thoughts are on the game but i could highly recommend this to people um to pick up if they want a, a simple family worker placement game and they've got now tiny factory coming out which is like in the same universe but uh, i think it's card placed like card building tableau engine building game so great now exploriana is this it's not their actual official game this is a prototype they sent me um, and we got sent the first one so this is like first original prototype um and we played it we absolutely love it we played it this is like the only prototype people i really prototype i've ever had been sent and actual people wanted to play it and play it all night it's it was so much fun um a shame the first kickstarter didn't do that well and then when they brought out the second kickstarter they changed some of the rules which when we played the new rules and i got sent updated version um i didn't like it um, uh this is not no that's right so this is the second print box because the first print came in a much bigger box i like kind of ticket to ride size box because there was actual board and things like that where this now they shrunk it all down to have smaller parts um so i've got basically first um first prototype components in here with um second prototype components and the box and it just makes it nice small and compact and then i just play with the original rules um and i i still like it now with this wizards um designer chris chris marlin good friend of mine um it's actually a nice little game very quick very light-hearted you're just kind of trying to build up your uh, powers and uh, attack each other which can lead to a bit of king making but um it's it's really quick short game Motherload, one of my favourite deck builders, and this is like first copy um, before they changed the artwork. Uh, it still didn't change the name, but um, I love the idea of this deck building game. Uh, Fruit of uh, Desert is one of my favourite games, and you can see this is like one of the old classic, not classic classic, but a classic line. Um, I've not bought the recent one because there wasn't much difference to it. They didn't even change the colours of the camels. Um, so there's still the beige coloured camels in it. But when I first played this at a friend's house, I absolutely loved it. Went onto Amazon. Um, a copy on Amazon was going for around £100. 
Uh, fortunately, the week later, I was going to UK Games Expo, and lo and behold, a copy of it turned up on the Bring and Buy for a really great price. And this is this copy. And uh, uh, yeah, it's still great. I will bring it out if people want to play games. It's quite lighthearted and fun. Well, it's not lighthearted, but it is fun. It's easy to play, and it's just mean. Um, so uh, yeah, I love through the ages. And then Eag- Igloo Pop is like a a grail game I've been after for you ages. Um, played it at a UK Games Expo, loved it, thought it was great fun, especially when you've got six people all sat around in a circle grabbing these igloos and then shaking them next to their ears, trying to guess how many little balls are inside. And um, yeah, great fun. Me and the family love playing it. Isaac is a demon. He just seems to guess correctly all the time. So, um, so yeah, I had to hunt down a copy. Um, and I'm happy with it. So that's uh, my bottom row of shelves in my collection. And uh, stay tuned for next month while I do the next row and uh, go from there. <laughs> Maybe by then might have uh, things might have changed around a little bit. But uh, so, yeah, that's what's in my collection at the minute. So in the news this week, quite a lot of stuff came out and I'm really excited, kind of excited bit dubious but we'll see is that there was a new announcement of the great western trail second edition okay not only was a second edition announced there's also going to be a trio trio trilogy of great western trails so we've got the us one we're then going to have an argentina one and then we're going to have a new zealand one so argentina is going to be out in 2022 and then new zealand is going to be out in 2023 um in the second edition great western trail they i think they're going to change a few things i don't believe it's going to have the expansion it was is a shame but um they are going to tidy up a few things um tweak a few things i believe and this is all what i've just heard um because there is some kind of those side actions that you can take that don't get used much um, there's always the ones that do get used that give you coins um, or what's the other one? But the others don't seem to um, don't seem kind of worth it. I mean, people always kind of go towards the other side of the, their player boards and take off cards and movement and things like that. So I, I believe they might tweak some of those side actions. The um, um, the, like, the free actions, they're not free actions, but yeah. The actions they can take. Um, I'm wondering whether they're going to possibly highlight the um, Native Americans, um, the uh, the Native Americans kind of how we remove in settlements along the track to earn points. I don't know if to describe that in the. Um, rules as what happened in history or maybe they might look at some other kind of alternative replacement for it so they're not skirting so they're not keep skirting around this kind of genocide or depletion of the uh, origin original um people that were there before basically we invaded um so i'm hoping I'm kind of wondering whether that be kind of looked at. And it'd be interesting to see what Argentina brings to it. And it'd also be interesting to see what New Zealand brings to it. And New Zealand is not dealing with cattle. It's dealing with sheep, of course. So that's interesting. Um, I mean, this is actually quite old news. This is actually January news that I found, but I found it late. Um, one of my favourite games, uh, the Taverns of Tedophili Tide. Better you. I never really said it, but tavern game with dice uh, from Wolfgang Vich, Vich, Vosh, Wolfgang Vols, Wolfgang Vols. Um, basically, announced the first expansion to it. Yeah, four extra four modules for the game. Yeah, now there's an option to 
add a wine cellar and a guest room to your tavern, along with um, innkeepers are giving players their own abilities this time, which is interesting. So it's going to be asymmetrical player powers. And then um, and then there's also this kind of mayor add-on where he will reward you for helping uh, develop the tourism in the town. So that is quite interesting. I'm looking forward to expansion to it. Kind of didn't need it. I mean, the game is actually really good on its own and it's already come to four modules um, that you can add in or take out. I mean, when you play with all of it, it makes an excellent game. But now we've got another four modules taking it up to eight, which hopefully it all combines into a nice one big super game, which I'm looking forward to when it finally comes out. So that's really interesting. On the Nova News, uh, another video game is being converted into a board game, which is Starview Valley. Now, Starview Valley, I've seen on Steam quite a bit. and don't know why I've not got it, unless like the price has been quite high, or the fact that I've got a Mac and a lot of games from Steam don't really play on Mac. They don't play on Mac at all, which is a pain and it's kind of annoys me a bit. But that's my choice of what computer device I buy. Um, so Starview Valley is a like kind of farming game, building a farm developing as i can remember uh people have gone mad for this it looks really good in this vi- in this board game it's a cooperative farming game you're working together to basically farm fish friend and all kinds of different resources to fulfill your grandpa's goals and restore the community center so looks quite interesting um and I don't know. At the minute, it's only in America. I don't know whether it's coming over to Britain, but we will have to see. Right. So listening back to this, when I first recorded it, I completely got the name wrong. Every time I said the wrong name, it might be because I'm dyslexic or it might be because I'm just stupid. Um, But basically, it's Red Rising, not Rising Red. Okay. whenever you hear Rising Red, it's not. It's Red Rising. I do apologise for getting the name wrong. I do apologise for Stone My Games and Pierce Brown. Um, but it's Red Rising. That's the name of this. So when I say Rising Red, I mean Red Rising. Thanks. And last of all, if I'm not missing anything, just after I released the last video, old Jamie Stegmar went and announced his next board game coming out, which is Rising Red. Never heard of Rising Red before. Rising Red is based on a book series um, by Pierce Brown. I've never heard of the st- series before. I am actually now listening to it on Audible. I'm about halfway through the first book. Um, and actually now taking, because I've not been out much, I usually listen to books on my commute or um, when I've been walking. But now, because I'm not commuting or doing that, I've actually been listening to books while I'm running instead of music. For some reason, I'm just like, ah, not, music's not really doing it for me. So I, try listening to books so um yeah i've been listening to it as a run it's a very interesting story um taking a while to get going in many sense but it is the first book in it there is a trilogy for the first part and there is another second trilogy um that's how i think it's like two books into at the minute so i think they still got to write the sixth book as i understand rising red the ball game is based on the first trilogy of books and Stonemaier, he absolutely loves this series. He brought the IP from Pierce Brown um, and um, now developed into this. It's a card game, basically. Hand management card game where you're trying to put your, uh, trying to up your influence or do up to actually different things in the in the game. And there's this unique kind of card laying ability. I've seen the rules for it. It looks quite good. He's, You can now pre-order it um there was a, a period of time you can pre-order it hopefully i'll put the link in below if it's still happening um and you can pre-order it and get the collector's edition with it which you can only get from the stone my games website or you'll be able to pick up the retail version when it reaches retail stores in the future and um it jamie stedman says there's no mechanical difference between the collector's edition and the retail version. The only difference is that is up to the components quality to the next level. 
um, and giving you like a inserted tray, insert tray and things like that, just as bonuses. So if you don't want to pay extra, you can just get the retail version and you won't be missing out on any gaming quality, gaming quality gameplay in that to the collector's edition. So be interesting, you know, literally the the pre-order is going live very soon. So hopefully this will be out in time. So yeah, that's exciting. I'm going to have to book it in and see what happens. Welcome everyone, Joel here. And I'm bringing you a top 10, a top 10 of my choosing, but I've kind of looked at what other people have been doing. And recently, the Dice Tower people did a top 10 of worker placement games, which worker placement is one of my favourite mechanisms in board games. Um, probably being surpassed by uh, deck building, maybe. They they really do come together. So when I get those both mechanics coming together, it could be an awesome combination, which we might find out here. But this is mainly focused on worker placement and my rules for this were I have to have played it physically, so as a real copy on a table and not on Board Game Arena or um, like Tabletopia or places like that. I've got to have played it. It doesn't matter if my plays are then being topped up with digital versions, um, but as long as I played it physically, that's what really counts in this matter. So, starting off with my temp number 10. Yeah. Starting off with my number 10. My number 10 would be Automania. But this could be surpassed and pushed out. Now, Automania is a great game. It's one of my... One one I fell in love with many years ago. And to be honest, I've not played it recently. But I've still got it. And if someone said, do you want to play it? I would definitely play it. It's still a great worker placement. And if you don't know what work, what Automania is, Automania is made by Al Porter Games. Al Porter Games. And Christian Umbernosi Osprey, I think. Okay. Um, this is going to be great for trying to uh, pronounce names. But anyway, so Automania is basically you running a car factory. You're building cars to demand and send them to either America or Europe. Now, um, what I, the worker place mechanism is the first part of this is you um, are putting workers out in this kind of square grid formation on the top or the left hand side of the grid. And then you're picking a tile from that grid um, along the line or the column you've picked and you're going to then use that tile. Now that tile could either be a factory part which goes into your factory to help build the cars or it could be money or it could be uh, pick a card or uh, so maybe a couple of other oh, upgrades as well um, so you can put upgrades onto the cards. So that is a simple thing. You get like a few four or five um, workers that you use, depending on number of players. And um, if it's got that whole f um, thing of if you want to go where someone else has gone, then you need to up the ante by placing an extra one extra that is already there of meeples to be able to use that spot, which then that person gets that meeple back and they can use it on their turn. Um, to do as well and then as soon as they you get that part depending where you put it you either put that part in the factory or in the manager row or in the upgrade row and you have to or you don't have to but you should build a car from that and the car moves along these conveyor belt lines as it goes along it picks up the uh, parts it needs that you put in the factory it comes with the upgrades and it depends how good that car is depends how far it can get up the front of the boat that's going to either America or Europe. Um, so basically, there's a demand surplus for the um, for each co each continent, and uh, depending how big a demand it is needed, um, it depends on how many points that car gets awarded. Uh, if that point car does really high in getting points, then it gets put on top of um, or stars, how many stars that car earns, not point, 
how many stars that car earns depends how far it gets up the boat and the boat awards points towards the people who place their cars there um so you're always trying to get the most out of that car that you build so it meets demand where you want to send it um and then uh, get points in return really clever i really love it um i did uh, get the second edition there's a couple of changes in it the changes work doesn't really matter um but um i still believe you can get a copy of this i'm not sure but this car this this could actually be pushed out eventually and um it could be pushed out because lost runes and arnic anaka anaka um are is a, a really good debt builder game with no it's a really good worker placement game with debt building elements so this could push this out or it could push something else out and automania could actually could be pushed up the thing if i get another play of it but rock lost runes of arnic is there and it could reach a good high spot at this point the only shame with automania is could have done with a uh, expansion could have done with an expansion it could have been a japanese or like uh, east asian kind of um d- demand vessel uh that's one thing i've always thought about um and could have brought a few more new elements to it so um it's a shame they've never really expanded on the game because it is a really good work of placement um so i recommend if you can get hold of a copy or just play it it is good fun So my number nine worker placement game is Above and Below by Ryan Lockett, who designed it and produced it and done the artwork for it. He's a really talented guy and he keeps coming out with these, uh, keeps coming out with these uh, really intriguing games. And they're mostly worker placement games. I mean, there is other things, but like this, the uh, Above and Below, Near and Far and Now and Never, I think the third one is. Um, it's all worker placement based, but uh, above and below is like a really clever story adventure game with worker placement elements. Um, and you get these characters, and they're either teachers or builders or just normal people, and you're either going to get them to um, build stuff, so properties which help bring your village on. You get teachers, which brings new people into the your world or into your village or you just or you can send them all um to off onto a venture into the caverns below and explore and maybe earn new stuff out and it's this kind of uh uh ring binder a uh, storybook a bit like uh a tales of arabian nights um so you, you go on this adventure you look at this chapter um and it might it might just be a one-off thing that happens or it might be this, um, it might lead on to one after another and after another. So it doesn't kind of, it's never, a, not much evolving in the story, um, but it's always like, it's either just an instant hit or it might evolve and you might have to make a couple of decisions um, on your way. But um, really clever. I, we love playing it. Two players, good fun. It is still a solid game. Um, I just had never played near and far enough for my liking. Um, I played it once, maybe twice. Um, but yeah, never played it enough compared to above and below. So uh, near and far, number nine. Number eight is Russian Railways. So it's designed by Hemet Ole, Helmet, Helmut Ole, Leonard orgler um and published by hans and glock so i have i played rushing railways when it first came out as a board game many years ago probably when i was first getting into it and i always remember like they was talking about how this game was basically a really solo playing game you like you'd have everyone's player pieces in one bag on its own um hand it to and say right this is yours this is your stuff you play with you put the center board out and that's it um and it is technically like that, but it's. I really love like the worker. Play. It's like kind of getting in people's way. You're kind of blocking them. 
if you can make the moves, not just block to be a real dick, but if you can actually do the moves and you could actually block to get in way people. And there's, it feels like there's there's a quite a few routes to take in it. And this is just like the Russian railways. They brought out expansions, which were kind of standalone, but were not. Um, and they really developed on the idea. And all you are is, it's really bland. You are, you're meant to be building these tracks along through Russia and you've got to put workmen out and you've got to put these black tracks and move these black tracks at first. And I kind of say this is kind of the foundation laying for the tracks. And then you've got to put these grey tracks along, which is, I, I don't know, the metal parts of the tracks. And then these brown roots and then these ivory roots and then these white, white roots. Um, I mean, if you go up to white, then you were doing very well. Um, and you could only do the white roots on the whack, on the top track but if you could get a few places that's 30 that could be that's 10 points a track um so it is really i i don't know why i love it i shouldn't it's, it shouldn't be my type of game but it is and if you can get into swing again you can actually play this game really quickly and uh, and start again and play another one i mean i play a lot of it now uh on board game arena i am getting schooled and it's like learning chess all over again. It's just so like I'm watching what these like there's champions on here because you get a ranking system in board game arena, and like I come up against them, and within the first round I know I'm losing and I'm gonna lose, and I'm watching what they're doing. It's like how did they? Why why are they scoring so many points? And I look back at what they've done because it lists it out. It's like okay then maybe that's my mistake maybe i need to play this new route next time kind of thing or it's that it is definitely like a chess opening you've got to know the best opening move to try and keep up with the good ones so um ultimate railways is coming out i'm really looking forward to getting that later on um i don't know if it'd be the wife's cup of tea but it's going to definitely be a game um, that i will sit in my collection and be ready to play when someone does want to play Number seven is Outlived by Gregory Oliver, guy Gregory Oliver and uh, Le Butte de yeah, Le Butte Le Butte de or Le Butte de or whatever. I mean, never really good at French myself when I was in school. Um, so this is a worker place and it has like you get like four um, meeples, but they have diff- four or five meeples and they have different strengths. So these numbers on it and um, really. Like it depends where you put and depends how much they can do. So their strength really does uh, depend how much resources you want to collect of it. Um, and it's only a few spots around the board. And there's, there's also this kind of monde- a rondelle kind of situation that you can only move. Like you pick one dude and you have to move him around the board. Um uh, like only a couple of spaces in either direction so you've got that kind of can't go anywhere it's like oh my i really need to get to that corner but how can i get there or um oh uh, you can't go where someone's already at where you've already activated and if you do go somewhere else already activated they could um attack you or if you've got a high strength for them you can attack them um so it's it's been like last year, or I believe it was last time I played it. It does go on for a while. It, it's like me and the wife have played it a couple of times to player, and then we realised, by me, this is going on a while. So it's one of those games you need to start early on in the evening or afternoon to make sure you get done. For some reason, there's only like a few rounds, six rounds, but it does go on. Um, and then you kind of get to this end, you get these end events at the end of it, and you've got to try and either buy them off and if you buy them off you get the event as a scoring uh, mechanism but if you don't buy them off they continue to build up and these are the end events uh, end of round events stack up causing you all sorts of grief um, you've even got not only that you've got like these little workers that work in your uh, vault um, and you've got to position them into these rooms to make it work and give you more benefits from it so there's two lots of kind of worker placements you've got these you've got your vault 
which you get these little round tokens, which are uh, survivors that you've gathered up and you put them into work into the vault, into the rooms to make your your clan work better. Um, and then you've got your actual workers and meeples out on the main board trying to gather resources to keep you alive and keep you better. And the ultimate goal is you're basically trying to get as many points as the other players. But the, the thematic goal is you're trying to be the best tribe out there for when the colony or the um, convoy comes along, they pick the best, best tri- tribe to follow them to live out this post apocalyptic world. And the other great thing is there's no zombies in this, um, which is great. Um, it basically changed up. It was just kind of some nuclear winter we've just entered um, after a nuclear cold war. But uh, but anyway, so yes, my number seven is um, Outlived. Uh, superb worker placement game. Number six is Tiny Epic Dinosaurs. Uh, of course, produced, uh, made by uh, Scott Ames and and published by Gaming Games. It is a it's a worker placement very similar to Dinosaur Island. Now, when I first got Dinosaur Island, I think I picked this up when I was at Essen. Um, just a normal game, um, got it back, didn't play it straight away, but then decided, let's give it a go one evening, got it out, wow, this was actually a pretty good game, uh, played it quite a few times, um, thing was, it's quite a lot, it's quite a lot on the table, and it can, it can go on quite long, now Tiny Epic Dinosaurs does that really small, um, it's more or less the same game, um, where you're trying to get you're um, trying to make dinosaurs, put them into your pen, make them breed um, and score points on it. And um, I only played it a few times, but I think if I wanted, I think really this fits the family better because it's so, it's small, compact and streamlined. Uh, there's not a lot going on. Um, so I'd rather buy, play this over Dinosaur Island. Now, if I'm playing with a big group or like group that are into heavy games and I probably would say let's do Dinosaur Island because it's a little bit more to it. But this does surpass Dinosaur Island because of how streamlined it is. So that's um, Tiny Epic Dinosaurs. Right, my number five comes in at a strange and uh, odd choice. Some might even disagree that it's not even a worker placement, but it is classed as worker placement and board game geek, and that's why it's in it because I did check through that these were correct. And I, as I did do it, I did find some strange and uh, compelling um, like choices of what is and what isn't worker placement. But this one is down as worker placement, and that is a British designed, British published game, which is quite nice. And it is Exploriana by Daniel, uh, 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 by Miles Radcliffe, or nearly called you Daniel Radcliffe. Miles Radcliffe and uh, Triple Ace Games. No, it's not. Yeah, it's Triple Ace Games who publish it. So this also comes with another caveat that I will probably only play this my way of playing it. And that's the first way they actually sent me a prototype of the game. Now, the first prototype came with this um, a two-part scenario. With the first part, you're bidding on, um, you're spending, you're bidding money to get these bonus, uh, like, abilities that you could use on the next turn. Um, and then you go into this kind of worker placement. Um, but they, um, when they released the first Kickstarter, they took, they took a lot of feedback from people and removed this first part and changed it to this just bog standard, dreary drafting kind of game and just killed the life out of it for us when we played this version of it. So, um, so I do will say I only play it like how we like to play it, and that's because we loved it. We, like the worker placement is 
it's still good, but it was this first round or this first part of the round where you're like, and it, all it is is we're kind of bidding against each other to get these bonuses. And there's only a few, there's not enough for everyone. Um, and so it's kind of that um, if someone starts and they say, I'll, I'll pay one for that kind of thing. And then that person has to up them or pass. And it just goes around like that. But it's that whole, it was that whole strategy of, do I really want this? Shall I just up their bid um, just to push them to spend a little bit more money? Because they have got a lot of money. Um, and money doesn't do a lot more than that in the game. And um, that was the whole, that was a lot of the heart of the game. Uh, the worker placement just comes with a turn of um, in turn order or a, a turn order such as placing out a pawn in an area to be able to then do the next part of in your turn, push your luck of revealing cards and not trying to bust out and then uh, depending on what you reveal and how many you reveal you can then take one two or three cards from that battle and uh, it's such a, a, a lovely game it's i felt gutted they changed it but maybe we're a minority of players that enjoyed it from its first incantation and um it's not a shame i've still got the game i've still got the prototype, yeah. So the prototype, first time they sent it, pretty good. Second time, they sent me updated stuff. It's great. I'm happy to play with that. I will play with that. Um, I will bring that out. It's actually a really good quality prototype, and um, I don't need the I don't need a real version. I've got my version, and that's how I'm going to play it. So, number five. Some might argue not a worker placement, but it's there in the ranking so it's that exploriana so number four is viticulture number four number four be a surprise to many of you um i do talk about it haven't played it in a while but when we were playing it absolutely loved it and it still holds up it beats out things like um agricola and caverna and lots of the old classic worker placement games, because if you put this on the table now, I will play it. I instantly know how to play it, and I um, would love playing it again. I don't own a Kepi, and actually, um, it's, there's a few on here that I actually don't own. But it is, and I haven't actually said yet, number six is Viticulture, the essential collection, right? Um, so Viticulture came out, and it done well. It was uh, Stone Mars first, second or first game that they um, no it's a second game they brought out I believe um, and it was basic worker placement um, and then he brought out Tuscany which was this massive big expansion box that added on like 10 or 11 or 12 modules onto it and instantly playing through some of these modules you thought I love this so there was a start and set up and all it was was two cards a papa and a mama side and um, it was basically um, asymmetrical um, playing starts. So you get different resources and different um, different stuff going on compared to the next person. And it was these two halves that you shuffle up and give one half, give a papa and give a mama, and that were your starting bits. And it's so random, but it was so clever. And it was just like, this should have been in the main box. And there was other kind of things that he took from the, um, from Tuscany and added it in and made this essential collection because everyone said this needs to be in the main box and uh, that's what it does now and that's all they sell um, and yeah and it is a simple worker placement of growing grapes picking them crushing them and making wine and then selling it to people who want to buy it and um, and you just keep doing this circle going through the seasons and you have these um you have like a certain number of meeples and you've got to choose whether you're going to use a few in the first half of the year and a few in the second half of the year or all in the first half or all in the second half it's up to you where you work them but it was that thing of um you you had this dilemma between 
how many do I use here? How many do I need over here? How do I make this, turn this grape straight away into a wine so I can claim a quick um, buy because you've got order cards that you might be able to fill within a couple of rounds or you might have order cards that will take um, like the whole, f- whole five rounds or something like that. And that's the thing is it's not like um, like how many rounds it is. It's a kind of a race, the first person to reach 20 points, I think. Um, like starts the end of the game. So when someone reaches twenty points, and then everyone's got to tr- gets like one last round, and um, you go and try and get past that person. Um, I just love that. And then there's a the grand meeple as well, which was just double the size of the other meeples, and would like say if someone tried to block you and you still had your grand meeple, it's like well I've still got this, I can use it to my advantage to go to this space and use that instead of not not being able to use it. So that was another nice feature of uh, the added additions to um, Viticulture. So I think he learned a lot of lessons from making Viticulture the basic Tuscany. And then so, oh yeah, I should have just added these in. And he learned, he, well, he always says he's learning lessons every time he brings out a game, but I think this was a massive big lesson to him. Um, so quiz on to him for making the essential collection uh... so my number three is another probably another striking one because a lot of you might say oh, is that it but my number three is a is a literal game um but big in personality and that's little town um designers are sean takachuchi and Aya Tagatucci. I hope I said that right. And it's made by a Yellow Games. Um, now, I made a review of this game. Um, you can see that in the links below. Um, I can't believe it's not been done before. This And it is a simple worker placement that even the family can get into. My son likes playing this because it's actually that simple and easy to understand and that is you put a dude down in an empty space and you claim everything around the eight squares around it so you can get resources you can use buildings for their abilities and um and then um just gather all that in on the next turn you can then go and put your dude in the construction area and build a building with all the resources you gathered and it is that simple and and it is if the space is empty you can either place in it or build in it and what more can people ask for that's it is that in a nutshell and i i think it's really strong again it's a shame they've not brought an expansion out for it in uh in the last two has it been out for two years what is it um three years um 19 uh, 2017 it came out so we're probably looking at three years and it's not had expansion. It could quite easily have expansion. There's even space in it comes with a pre um uh, a plastic molded tray. There's even space uh next to the building tokens for another set of building tokens. So I, I kind of wonder if they had a plan to uh, do another uh, expansion with maybe just even buildings or extra um bonus cards or even some extra cards in some kind of way but yeah it's a shame they've never got really got round to it um i really wish they would but then they have got another game in this universe little factory coming out where it's a card uh card tableau game um so we see it might be just as good as little town but that's i'm really hoping they will hope even a plan for an expansion in the future but it's still great as a simple, quick, family worker placement game, easy to understand. So that's Little Town. My second game is from Shem Phillips and SJ McDonald, and it's from Gar Garfield Games. Um, or Garfield game, Garfield games, or 
uh, things like that. But okay. Uh, and if you haven't guessed, it's Architects of the West Kingdom. Now, I, I know at first, when I first played this, I berated it for being a really bad game and what happened to me in the game until I was told, no, you were taught the game wrong. So I played it again to the real rules and loved it and would have played it again and again um, just because someone got the rules wrong. And I'm thinking there was two rules they got wrong. I mean, there's definitely one about, like, if you've got kidnapped people of your thing, you have to drop them all off, not choose which ones you can drop off. That really killed it for me. I mean, because I got affected by that. Um, but there was another rule that they got wrong. And it was just like, oh, this changes everything. This changes my view of the game. And I love it. And it is the fact that you it's a unique worker placement where you've got like 20 dudes. Uh, you never have that. Um, but you have to put so many out to possibly do an action. The more you put out, or the more you have in an area, the more you can take of that thing but there is a possibility that they can be kidnapped and that's another great aspect of kidnapping people's own meeples and holding them for ransom or put them in the prison and i i like that um because you can you'll be watching someone stacking up an area with a with a meeple and it's just like i can't let you keep doing that i'm gonna have to go there and make some arrests because there's too many a bit like social distancing now too many people gathered in one spot and uh, we're going to have to arrest you and fine you, put you back into isolation. That's basically it. it is, it's more or less um, a, the uh, COVID-19 um, game set in the Middle Ages or set in its own realm um, because, yeah, not allowed to have too many people gathering on one spot. And uh, if they do, then you go in and arrest them. Why haven't I thought of that? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was that thing, and it is, it's just another simple game of gathering resources and building buildings and hiring people and working on the all-inclusive cathedral, and I've not played the expansion. I want to play the expansion, but I've not had a chance, so hopefully, as soon as I get out of here, I'm going to play the expansion. So that is it. I mean, West Kingdoms went from bottom of my list of games to second because of I being taught correctly and um, maybe it's on me maybe I should look into like if I feel there's something wrong with the game I should look into it and figure out why I didn't like it but maybe I trust people too much maybe I should have said yeah fine that's how it is or uh, I'm not sure about this can I I want to look at the rules but I'm not one of those people that says I demand to see the rules um, I expect if people's teaching with confidence that they know what they're doing. Um, maybe that's on me a bit. But anyway, side sidetracked a bit. Number 15. Number two is Architects of the West Kingdom. But before I get to my number one, um, I, I haven't played every worker placement. I probably never will. Um, but not some of the old ones anyway. Um, but there's a few I want to play. And being in lockdown, it's been a bit difficulty, but I would like to, as soon as things have eased here again, uh, I probably, I want to get and play Obsession, so that kind of uh, rift, game rift on Downton Abbey. So I hear it's pretty good. Uh, I know friends have got it. I would like to play Frankenstein's, uh, the Frankenstein's game, uh, Air of Frankenstein, I believe, by Blad, Blad Hat Games. Um, that looks fun. Again, Friends have got that, so I've got a chance to play it. And then the other one I would like to play, I think, June Imperium, um, just to see what it's all about. It's getting good hype. Um, so they're the three I want to do. Three that missed out on my list. A couple of games that missed out on getting to my top ten. Um, Francis Drake, love that game. Uh, very dickish, I'd say. Um and I mean, the worker placement's right at the beginning of each round. You go and shopping to get stuff, and then you go sailing over the seas to discover new lands and things like that. But it's got that lovely worker placement that you can only go one direction, can't go back. So you've got to try and plan your um, route through the town effectively, efficiently, but also not be too slow because you don't want to get too late to the uh, harbour to sell your ship. So 
uh, that just misses out number 11 uh, village um i i like it uh, it's innovating in the fact that you get workers and then they die and it's a little bit of a, a weird concept to put in but it's a whole thing of like it's normality people live born work die um and that is basic what happened in the old times and you're trying to get them in the best spots possible on um the memorial book for their deeds and things like that and things so um yeah village just misses out out of stone pri- very much a worker placement very much a legacy game If he'd only sorted the ending out on that and had a real grand final ending of the last two st- chapters, it would have been a great worker placement game. He kind of miss sold it off. He, I don't know what happened with his thoughts with it. It's such a shame. I wish it could be reworked, second version of it, um, and reworked to be much more, much more of a not so much anti-climax, but the opposite. Um, a more finale finish to the game of, yes, this is it. And still be playable afterwards. Um, so, it's a shame it got to that. Um, God, The Godfather, Colliani's Empire by uh, Common Games. And uh, it's the Eric Lang game. It's, it's a good worker placement in a way. Very mafia but you're putting your dudes out in areas and trying to get resources and things like that, complete missions. And um, I liked it. It's just a shame that they use artwork, the same artwork on everything. It was like a prototype and they would still try and commission the artist to do stuff. It was like, come on, you've got cards. You need more art. The, this artwork of Colion's Empire was everywhere. It kind of just didn't do it to me, but then the rest of it was pretty good nice stuff um yeah it, i i enjoyed it but it wasn't enough to stay in my collection um or for me to say i'm done now with it so shame but that's what happens so my number one might be a very big surprise to you but i played this quite a bit when it first came out played it with the expansions and then my all my plays turn to when they developed app and the app is superb that I played it over and over again. This is Lords of Water Deep, um, from uh Wizards of the Coast, of course, and Peter Lee and Rodney Thompson who designed it. And uh it was one of my first as soon as I played it, loved it, great really intriguing love the fact that you can build new buildings and own these buildings and when someone uses your building you get a reward or you get payment for someone using your buildings i love that idea and um the fact that um you get uh the buildings are meant to be built and they're out there to be purchased and if you don't no one builds them they earn points so um, while they're sitting there and they're gathering points, you then, oh, I'll build this now and you get a few more points for it. And the whole concept of um, as you um, do stuff and do missions, the missions like, like, oh, if you go to the first place spot, you get an extra cube for doing this. And, oh, it was just great. It's like, like an adventure yourself when you're doing this. And then you've got the hidden uh, Lord card that... Um, basically governs like hey, you need to go after these types of um quests to earn you more points at the game and damn it if someone gets the building the builder card because if you know who's got that because they are constantly building and they just seem to have monopoly and if they can get at least four or five buildings out yeah you're, you're in trouble so um it's great and then as i was playing it on the app i was seeing more and more of the indication of the quests of how this quest will benefit from doing this, get more of these quests. And once you've got this quest done, that that every time you pick up another quest, you get this stuff. And it just opened, playing the app 
because it allowed me to play over and over again, allowed me to see the intricacies of all the quests and how they build on each other. And um, yeah, I, I haven't played the physical version for a very long time, but and I've never owned it, surprisingly, never owned the game, um, but I do love it. And this is, and I've said this before, this game would lend itself so well to being a legacy game. Imagine like starting off with maybe even basic, basic Lords of Waterdeep. And then like at some point someone could actually peel off the building sticker off the tile and stick that permanently on the board. And it's a permanent fixture that they own for the rest of the game. Imagine that in a, in a, a campaign legacy format. And I do wish Wizards of the Coast I looked into this and spoke to people like Rod Davio, um, Jamie Stegmar, um, things like that, who've, who have already created these legacy games, even um, Renegade Games, who clank legacy with the best legacy game on, on so far. I talk to them and find out how do we turn this into, because it can even be that you do certain quests and you can peel off a a sticker and add like this building now gets a plus one cube when someone uses it kind of thing that would be amazing um and i uh, yeah that was one thing that was one legacy game i would ask for and definitely could be worked very well into it but anyway let's go that's come that's a fantasy like i still like the game as it is and we'll play it if people put it on the table so um yeah my number one is lords of war deep basic with the two expansions doesn't bother me i mean the two expansions make it more uh, with the corruption level and that balance in the corruption you're taking but um yeah i'll play it with the core game again it's fun so um yeah so yeah thank you for watching and uh let's get back to it well that was a very interesting top 10 i did there of worker placement games that is why the video is delayed um, because I'm a perfectionist and I like to put a lot of effort into it. I really hope it's blowing a gale outside. I really can't help you can hear that. Um, so now I'm going to quickly get on to doing a few Kickstarters. These are up to date. I'm literally doing them now. This is the middle of the month. So what I recorded previously is really out of date and none of the Kickstarters are live. So hopefully by the time this goes live, there's still a chance for you to jump in on these Kickstarters if you want to look at them. So we're going to start off with first is... Tiny Turbo Cars from Horrible Guild. Um, basically, I talked about this in January. I was a game I was looking forward to come out. It's basically Micro Machines cross with that puzzle, switchy, Rui kind of puzzle game of moving the squares around to make the picture up. But in this, you're moving squares around to program your how your car is going to move along the carpet. Um, it's very good. There's lots of stuff coming out for it. I don't know if I'm going to go ill in on it yet. But knowing me, I probably will at the end. Um, there's a there's, there's a bit there. Um, I might want to save my money for future projects coming up. Um, that I'm not going to fully, I'm not going to back all the way, mainly because of the shipping that's going on it. But AEG has brought out Monsters and Meeples. Meeples and Monsters. And it's basically a bag building Meeple game where you collect workers and put into a bag, and you draw them out, and then you can do stuff with it. It's it looks a lot like Lords of Waterdeep, and as you saw in the top ten, Lord was Lords of Waterdeep is my number one worker placement game at the minute, and um, this very much reminds me of it, where you're collecting workers around to complete missions, to defeat monsters, and things like this. This is a bag building one where you're drawing the meeples out of the bag, and then you can place them into buildings, upgrade them to be stronger and better and fit and uh, stuff like that. It looks very good. My only problem is, it's one, AEG is not doing any stretch goals for this. So there's kind of no kind of real emphasis to back it because you might not miss out. There's like an expansion, little tiny expansion that's coming with. I'm still not clear whether that's going to be Kickstarter exclusive. I will need to check that out. But the other downside is that UK has got its very own designated shop ship shipping cost which at the minute stands at 24 dollars which is around 20 pounds on top of your previous purchase so we're really being hit by it could be because of covid it could be because of um brexit um 
they're basically, I think the Brexit uh, saga is still unknown to certain companies and AEG had just kind of looked at it and said, well, that's what it is. Um, so it might be worth a wait of just waiting for this to hit retail stores in the coming future. So I am backing it, but I might slightly drop it uh, before it ends just because the cost doesn't warranty the game, um, even though I still want to play it. And then last of all, Eternal Palace from Alley Cat Games, great British company. Um, so the designer is Stephen Armini. Um, he's actually quite well known for little games that you can get on. Um, oh, what's that website called? Uh, basically, a website where you can do print and play games. Um, and because uh, he's done uh, Sprawlopodis, uh, Archipelagos, and Circle Wagons, Animal Kingdoms, Groves, Tricky Tides. Um, so he's well known for that. Uh, but this is a full, massive, big game. Um, okay, so Eternal Palace is... An, the Eternal Palace has fallen in disrepair. As a leader of Noble House, you're seeking favour of the Emperor. You plan to aid in reconstruction. Collect materials you need to contribute to rebuilding the palace, monuments, and commemorate the restoration of, by creating a beautiful painting of his beloved gardens. In your effort, you'll catch the eye of the emperor. And w will your rival nobles be honoured instead? Only one house will win the emperor's ultimate recognition. It is basically a Euro dice placement game for one to five players. Players are sign workers represented by dice. So Alley Cat Games do like their dice games. Um, lo to locations based on their combination of values. And you will visit locations to gain resources, build monuments and gather painting pieces for your masterpiece. What's quite cool about it, yeah, it just sounds like a normal worker placement game where you're gathering resources. But you're also kind of building this picture on an easel. So you get this little easel and you start with a background and then you start adding pieces, slotting these little pieces down um, over, over making layers on top. Um, it looks quite good. I do like that kind of aspect. Uh, it reminds me of another game I've still got coming to me called Canvas, where you're kind of sliding the plastic perfect sheets over the top of each other to build a picture on top of a picture. Uh, but this is basically um, not the um, plastic see-through seats, but or, but actually just kind of strips of layers. So you kind of just layer on top of layer. Um, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, deluxe version is only £42. Um, shipping will be put on top of it. But, I mean, with the deluxe version, you get the Emperor, the Eternal Palace, all the Kickstart exclusive content, all unlocked stretch goals, exclusive period for backers, lab labyrinth expansion, exports expansion, four beautiful monument miniatures. I don't think they really do anything but just add um acidic value to the game uh, and a solo mode so at 42 pounds sounds like a good price as i said shipping is added on top estimated timeline so uk because it's uk brand it's four pounds at the minute for shipping which it sounds like a really good deal um especially if you are uk based you should back this for the price it is usa is not too bad either eight to twelve dollars which is not bad. Uh, EU one and EU two. EU one is about six to eleven dollars, whichever section that is. So yeah, um, Eternal Palace looks like another beautiful game coming from Candy Cat Games, and there is plenty of time still to back it. Check out, check out Eternal Palace. Tiny Turbo Cards. They're my kind of recommendations at the minute. Um, there is another Everdale expansion on Kickstarter, so if you're into Everdale go over to that. I've actually never played the base game. I'm um, not really bothered, but there is a lot of love for Everdale and they've got some cool um, pledges going on actually, which is actually making a bit of a ruckus in the uh, industry at the minute of how they're dealing with like uh, their all-in-buy uh, pledge uh, to get the whole lot. And I, I believe they said this is their last expansion. 
But um, so yeah, if you like Everdell, might as well go over there and check it out and see what they're doing. Going on to the competition, I mean, I've still got the uh, still got cluster. Um, I know I said I'll be giving away, but no one actually. I don't think anyone commented on the last video. Some people wanted to, but again, I got that out late. Um, so there's been a bit of mix up of when it was coming out. So now I'm hoping to release this at the same time as the the podcast. And that way people can then head on over. So if you do want to um, cluster the game, we have reached, we've got 117 subscribers. Got a few more in the days. Um, make a comment on the on this this video make a comment on last month's video um as i said i'll look back over the next months and hopefully at the end of this month which is march um i will draw a winner and i will send you this copy if you're uk if you're not uk and you still want a copy you might need to talk to me about um shipping costs because it will be a bit brutal on my finances if i have to ship it to america or something like that so if you're uk make a comment still make a comment anyway of what you've seen on this Tell me if I'm right with my worker placement uh, choices. Um, I know there's some kind of controversial worker placement games in that, but it's my list. Um, but let me know. Make a comment, any kind of comment uh, on the video, and you will be opted in for a copy of this. So one day I will give this away. I'm not, I'm not messing people around. Um, it's just my unorganisation of doing podcasts because I've got to do it around life family and a job so uh so yeah so i hope you do like these videos if you do like them give them a thumbs up if you like these videos all together please subscribe to the channel that helps i would like to get a little bit a few more followers um especially 1000 because that opens up my channel a little bit more but we'll work towards that um so subscribe to me um and uh, hopefully there'll be a few more videos come out because I've got quite a lot in production. I just needed to get this one done. So I'll see you around. Hopefully end of the month, beginning of a new month, there'll be the next version of this blog coming out. So thank you for watching and good night.